Hey learners, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on types of organizational structure. This is a requested video by Khalid. I hope you will like the video. Before we start the video, it's a humble request. Please subscribe to my channel so that whenever I come up with any video, you will directly get the notification. Now without any further delay, let's come to the video. An organizational structure refers to the framework or system that defines how an organization is designed, organized and managed. It outlines the relationships, roles and responsibilities of individuals within the organization as well as how information flow and decisions are made within the organization. Organizational structure play a crucial role in determining how efficiently or we can say how effectively an organization operates. In simpler word, we can say it's a blueprint that defines the hierarchy and arrangement of different parts within a company such as departments, teams and positions. It establishes the chain of command, reporting lines and communication channels to ensure smooth coordination and collaboration among employees. The specific type of organizational structure adopted by a company can vary based on its size, industry, culture and objectives. The structure can influence factors like decision-making speed, employee communication, job role and overall productivity. There are several types of organizational structures and each has its advantages and disadvantages. Here are some common types of organizational structure. First, hierarchical organization structure. Second, functional. Third, horizontal or flat organization structure. For uh, uh, divisional, next uh, matrix, six team based organization structure, and last network organization structure. These all structure are based according to the size of organization, nature of job, connectivity, communication between the employee, and so on. Okay, now let us see one by one all these structure. First, hierarchical organization structure. A hierarchical structure is a traditional pyramid-shaped organization with a clear level of authority and control, where information and decision-making flow from top to down. Hierarchical organization structure is the most common type of organization structure where a chain of command goes from top authority to bottom to down. Where, uh, where top authority could be CEO or manager and uh, down could be entry level or low level employees. And each employee has a supervisor to guide them, to direct them. For example, a government organization with a clear hierarchy starting from the president or prime minister down to various ministers, departments and local offices. Okay, so here, whatever the command has been given by the top authority, it goes on the like a in a chain and uh, to the lower offices. Okay, now after understanding what is hierarchical organization structure, let us see its advantages. It is the simplest method of administration and is easy to understand and manage. Since it's um, easy to add or remove levels of management. This approach can be beneficial to companies that are constantly growing and changing. Third, since the decision-making authority is concentrated at the top, it allows for faster decision. And last, it ensures that everyone is well aligned with uh, formalized rules and procedures within a line organization. So these were the advantages. Of course, it's a very simple and very uh, uh, like it's the simplest method here. Whatever the authority has provided uh, the information, it keep on going. It keep on passing. There is no complexity in this kind of structure. Now let's see its disadvantages. First point we have being overly reliant on line officials may become an issue in uh, instances where they aren't available. For example, if uh, just because it's a, a chain, if any chain is missing, then there will be shortage of uh, or you can say there will be delay of work. 
So that's why you can say it's a disadvantage. Second, we have line organizational structures are rigid and inflexible. As such, they maintain discipline so rigorously that uh, they can rarely change. Third, we have it might create a culture of favoritism based on relationships or friendship. Last, since the department manager is concerned only with the activities of his own department, employees are only skilled in tasks of their own department. Um, actually, in this, they don't have multiple departments. They have only one task, only one routine. So there is no change of, or you can say there is no way to learn more skills or there is no job rotation or there is no such opportunity. So their skills is limited and uh, uh, their activities uh, is concerned only with their own department. Second, we have functional organizational structure. Similar to a hierarchical organizational structure, a functional organization structure starts with position with the highest level of authorities or responsibility at the top and goes down from there. Primarily, through employers are organized according to their specific skills and their corresponding function in the company. Each separate department is managed independently. Here, all the departments are independently managed, like uh, separately. Uh, for example, if there is production, then the staff of production team will be in one department. If it's marketing, marketing uh, uh, people will be in one department. Human resource, they will be in another and so on. As the name implies, a functional organization structure is organized for each function within the company. For example, below the top uh, management or authority, you might have a production department, a marketing department, an IT department and so on. And according to these departments, staffs are categorized. Let's see the advantages of this uh, structure. First, it allows employees to focus on their role. Second, it encourages specif uh, specialization. Okay because here the employees are categorized according to their skill. So we can say the department is specialized, okay? It helps teams and departments feel self-determined. Uh, last, it is easily scalable in any sized company. Like every company, if uh, nowadays you are seeing they have production, they have marketing team, they have human resource, they have uh, production, they have research and, de and development team. So uh, these kind of function we have seen. So it is easily scalable. Like you can measure how many employees are in under one uh, one category. So you can keep them. And if you have to keep and record or you want to know how their functioning is, so it's very easy to judge from there because here the department is according to the nature on job nature of skill okay now let's see the disadvantages of functional organizational structure first can create uh, silos within a organization here first point we have it can create uh, silos within an organization you can say a bulk a bulk of staff in uh, one group and so on second it hampers interdepartmental communication because the departmental uh, departments are separated according to the um, according to the nature of department so here interdepartmental communication is not possible it it gets stopped last we have obscure processes and strategies for different markets or products in in a company so according to this, uh, we can say as a department is uh, separated, one department don't know what is the strategy of other department or overall uh, what's going on in the company, what is the main plan. They don't know because they in their department uh, are categorized according to one function. So here uh, interdepartmental communication is not happening. So they don't know about the overall uh, strategies of the organization. They are only concerned and they are only knowing about their own specific functional areas or a specific functional department. Now next we have horizontal or flat organizational structure. A horizontal or flat organizational structure fits companies with 
few levels between upper management and staff level employees many uh, startup business use a horizontal organization structure before they grow large enough to build uh, out uh, different departments but some organizations maintain their structure since it uh, encourages less supervision and more involvement from all employees this is an organizational chart type mostly adopted by small companies and uh, startups in their early stage It's almost impossible to use this uh, model for larger companies with many project and employees because here uh, as you can say here there is no uh, department according to the function according to the nature of uh, a particular job here uh, the system is not uh, as clear as uh, we have seen the functional department in functional department the nature of uh, uh, marketing job was in different separate department uh, production was in separate department but in this we can't see so basically this type of structure is for those uh, uh, who have small companies or who have just started their new startup who don't have uh, so much uh, complex system or so much employees or departments so for them this is good Here are some uh, pros and cons for this structure. First, let's see the pros. It gives uh, employee more responsibility as uh, department is not separated. It's for the startup or small company. So whoever is free or whatever the job is, you have to um, literally uh, you have to assign the task among all the members you are having. So it gives employee more responsibility. second uh, fosters more uh, open communication uh, third improves uh, coordination and speed of implementing new ideas as we have seen in this uh, advantage employee have more responsibility so in this type of uh, uh, structure they will be learning more and more things as uh, they have more opportunities more chances to do the things more chances to take responsibility uh next uh, we have a uh, next point says that uh, they have open communication here they can convey the message uh between uh the individuals who's working over there and uh, another it improves coordination and speedy implementing new ideas as the structure is not that complex and they don't have so much department so here the work take place very speedily okay Now let's see the disadvantages of this uh, structure. First, it can create confusion since employers do not have a clear supervisor to report to. Second, it can produce employees with more uh, generalized skills and knowledge. Third, it can be difficult to maintain once the company grow beyond startup status, of course. when your company is small you have less work you have less employee and it's easy to manage and maintain but once the company grows you have more responsibility you have more employees so it is difficult to manage so in that in that situation you literally have to switch to another sort of structure this structure will not be good for a big company or for the one who has grown from a small to bigger Next we have divisional organization structure. In divisional organization structures, a company's division have control over their own resources, essentially operating like uh, their own company within the larger organization. Each division can have its own marketing team, sales team, IT team, etc. This structure works well for large companies. as it empowers the various divisions to make decisions without everyone having to report to just a few executives so here every department every uh, division have their own executive so uh, they don't have to report just one but they have to report their uh, uh, divisional executive divisional type of organization charts have their own division which uh, correspond to either products or geographies each division contain the necessary resources and functions needed to support the product line and geography as you can see how complex it is 
like uh, it have multiple division and each division have their own uh, uh, marketing or sales team or it team uh, they don't have to tell every report to one executive but they have their own uh, executive for each uh, division and hence the task become more accurate it's on time especially these kind of uh, uh, structure is important for a very large organization now let us see the pros of the structure first it makes it uh, much easier to assign responsibility for actions and results second works well in markets where there is high competition as local managers can quickly respond to changes in local conditions third it tends to yield faster responses to local market conditions four it helps to build a culture that contributes both to higher morale and a better knowledge of the division's portfolio now let's see the disadvantage of this structure first it have multiple divisions that add more overhead cost to the organization second when a number of functional areas are uh, spread among various divisions it might lead to inefficiencies next point we have with skills being compartmentalized by division it can be difficult to transfer skills or best practices across the organization since uh, each division may have its own strategic goals it might not always align with the overall company strategy so these are the drawbacks or you can say the disadvantage of this structure on the basis of divisional organization structure there are certain uh, other structure which comes under divisional structure let us see them first market based structure what is it a large consumer goods company like uh, target or walmart might separate its uh, durable goods which is clothing electronics furniture etc from its food or logistic divisions okay so here what we can see is it has separated its division according to the market according to the industry according to the customer so this kind of structure is called market based divisional organization structure product based divisional organizational structure what is it divisions are separated by product line for example a tech company might have a division dedicated to its cloud offering while the rest of the divisions focus on their different software offering example adobe and its creative suite of illustrator photoshop indesign etc so here what we have seen like if a company is having multiple products for example if it's a tech company so a tech company can have a software which is editing software or you can say if they have a software which offer adobe or maybe they have photoshop photoshop as we all know it's for the image uh, if it's about adobe um, basically we use it for editing so for there are some for designing some clip art there are some for enhancing the photos there are some division for uh, editing softwares and so on so according to these softwares according to this products they have different divisions for example if it's about a uh, a company which is offering um, like uh, biscuits chocolates and uh, cold drinks so according to the division of the product they have made a structure like okay for the uh, uh, for the chocolate we have this division for ice cream we have this division for cold drink we have this division okay i hope you understand another in this uh, divisional organization structure is geographic Uh, divisional organization structure according to geographic division organization structure divisions are separated by region territory or district offering more effective localization and logistic so as we can understand according to the name geographic division so here the division is done on basis of territory district uh, locality companies might establish satellite offices uh, across the country or the globe in order to stay close to their customer so uh, we have seen if the, if the company is very big and if they have multiple customer if the company is uh, uh, at 
uh, like if the company is serving across the border or across the territory or from urban to rural like uh, multiple places so they uh, they keep themselves connected through even the software satellites and so on okay so these kind of uh, division which is based on geography is called geographic divisional organization structure so this was the part 1 of the video for the second part of the video because the video is getting a bit longer so i have made the separate part just have a look on the second part i have already uploaded and the link you can get in the description box so don't forget to check that out i hope you like the video if yes then don't forget to give a thumb up and let me know your opinion in comment box so that i will be motivated to make more and more videos like this see you soon with some more interesting topics till then have a nice day bye